Welcome back, I'm Kim Bailey, she's for the Unrolled Born and this is Inside Exec. This is part three, the final part of our 100th episode where we were talking with John Eddy, Nick Plummer, Josh and Crystal Hockley and in this session we talked a lot about technology and its influence on the things that we want to do in the next five years. We're back. We've got another couple of questions but we have sort of strayed in our, our conversation up to this point uh, on both of those topics, I think. But I'll let Fuliana decide. She's important. What we might talk about next. Thank you. I think technology, a bit more on technology will be good. I'm certainly not a technology expert. Actually, I'm the opposite to that. Two things I like to share, and that is... I always had other people helping me with technology. Until we start the podcast, and you probably heard this bit on other podcasts, and we recorded the first one, and Kim said to me, okay, now you can send it to me. And I thought, oh, yeah, okay. Um, you know, I thought it's like an email. I'll just send it to her. And, of course, that didn't work. So Kim, because she knows me and she challenges me, she doesn't help that way. She just makes me do it. And then <laughs> what had happened is, and oh, after, I worked out, <laughs> after I worked out one piece, then she'll say, oh, yeah, that's really good, but I need it in an MP3. And I'm thinking, what, what is hell? that? <laughs> <laughs> because I need to edit it and, and so on happens. and so forth. So because I didn't, I want to let Kim down and mm. because I didn't want to do what I've always done and that is go to some of my tech-off friends mm. and say, mm. can you show me or can you do it for me? I actually taught myself. The satisfaction I got from that was enormous. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm probably still minus, but that to me is a learning and it's important. Mm. But more recently, I've been hearing terminology and that AI and some of my accountability partners are very much into that stuff and so I don't want to appear too stupid so I try to teach myself or blockchain mm. and this story I like to share with you because it really I, it meant something it resonated with me this one about a blockchain and they use that technology in a Syrian refugee camp it's outside Jordan and it's in a very remote area so it's a refugee camp and what happens, how these things run, is there is a supermarket which people go to. That's the only thing there for both to get their food mm. and to have their social interaction. Mm -hmm. This is supplied by World Food Program, WFP. They fund the food, right? To get the money to buy the food and, and spend it in a supermarket, usually you would go to a third party, so the funding goes to a bank or a a financial institute of some sort that costs money mm. and then it goes from there to the beneficiary who is the refugee who gets the money and then goes to the supermarket and buy, right? Very complicated and costly. Mm -hmm. Remember, they've got nothing, these people, so it's not like we're down the street and got everything that opens and shut. So what happened, this has been tested in India before, but using the blockchain technology he did it so then the money would go from WFP to the blockchain, so there's no charge or anything. The person got to identify that I am Fulyana, I'm the refugee and entitled to $30 to buy food. And he put in the Iris Guard system and they recognised me and are validated by just looking in the screen mm -hmm. when I come in the shop. And that would say how much money I've got, that I am who I am, I don't need any password, I don't need anything. The supermarket uses the code and mm -hmm. they get paid directly. Right. So to me, if this is being used now in such a remote place, mm -hmm. and apparently in Jordan they already got the iris recognition technology for passports and yep. stuff like border control sort of things. To me, I got very, very excited by that, by saying, look, this is healthy mm. and still not really putting people out of work as yeah. such. So we always only see one side. So what's happening with technology going forward, I'm very eager to continue to, to learn and use it in whatever we do. We've talked about technology a fair bit. and I've already said I struggle with it a bit, but, you know, but it's good when you learn how to do something new and you find you can actually do it. Yeah. A couple of interesting things... One is, increasingly, your friends are doing things which are business things, which 
use technology to do it. Yes. And it amazes you, and I'm going to give you a couple of examples. So one of my friends is running a mentoring business, but it is so she now has a platform which she has built, which runs, so it does all the things necessary to make mentoring within organisations effective. Mm-hmm. Um, and, of course, once you've built a platform like that, and so you can deliver your product over the internet, which she does, yeah. you're not bound by geographic boundaries at all. Yes. You know, you can do business anywhere in the world, and she is already. And, you know, and she's building an amazing business because she's got an, a good understanding mm-hmm. of technology. Another friend of mine has started a, another sort of massive growth area. We are talking about health and fitness being a growth area, but the other is going to be health care and, you oh, know, yeah. aged yeah. aged care and retirement will be huge. already a massive growth area, going to continue to grow. So this friend has developed up, again, a platform which helps advise people on the right facilities for them state by state in Australia. So, you know, he's built himself an Australian business very fast, again, because of good understanding of technology. So it's whilst it's something I struggle with, you've just got to stay on top of it, I think. The one thing that I think about with technology is I think it's important that we don't forget to do things ourselves. Like, if something has been invented to help make our life easier, that's great, and I'm all for that. But don't forget how to do that task without the technology. I actually experienced this, or kind of experienced this on the way down. I saw a woman get out of the car and cross the road. She didn't even look either way. How's that related to technology? Just my opinion. Is everything done for her through technology that she's actually forgot to look both ways? And maybe not. But that's when I saw that happen, that's where I was like, wow, has the world got to a point where everything's done for us so easy that we we forget to look across the road? That's something that Crystal and I experienced with our racing. We have all that, you know, we have the heart rate monitors, we have all these devices that we use for training and for racing. And so many times during racing, an athlete forgets to put a new battery in their device and their race goes south because they can't see their heart rate. Well, you should be able to know your body. You should know your perceived yeah. effort to finish that race. So I'm all for technology, but I, I just I think that we need to still remember that we can do things without the technology in case that te- technology fails. I guess my overriding concern is the introduction of AI and that we are educating ourselves so that we know what instructions to give. Because AI will learn, it will learn from us, it's learning from us now in all sorts of ways and we need to be aware of how we ask questions, how we give instructions, how we communicate what we actually mean and I think that that is something that we have lost in the acceptance of general technology that we have now that where our communication is shortened, what we say is shortened, we, you know, we, uh, there I'm sure is a generation who can't spell words but that's just my opinion, that we are not as careful about the instructions we give and about making sure that what we have said is understood and is understood in in the way we meant it. And so that's my concern. I embrace technology, as you know, but I would be wary of the communication that still needs to happen within the acceptance of that technology. Two things I'll I'll comment on in how I think it's affecting, I guess, the triathlon side of things and also I work as a licensed conveyancer a couple of days a week. First of all, I'm excited with technology and how it's going to impact everything we do over the next 20 years and I think anyone that doesn't embrace it is going to get left behind as we all know. With conveyancing, it's really interesting. We've just recently or we're, we're trying to transfer across to what's called PEXA, which is electronic conveyancing. I believe that anybody who doesn't want to learn that is going to get left behind. And it's quite interesting how a lot of the older solicitors, and they don't want to learn it. They don't want to embrace it. It amazes me because I think, well, in two years' time, everybody has to be on this platform, apparently. And if they're not on the platform, they're not going to have a business. For me, it's a great thing, and I'm loving learning about it, and I'm excited to see, and I can't wait for everything to be electronic. So I think that's fantastic for for my job. It also means that I can pretty much work from wherever I want in the world. So instead of having to physically go to a settlement and pay the money, 
it just all happens. I don't know if anybody knows anything about the PEXA program, but basically it just does it all electronically for you. So no one actually has to physically go and do the settlement and swap checks and all that type of thing and pay $18 for a check. That's exciting for me on the technology side of things with my conveyancing. And then with triathlon, I think something that interests me is the impact that it's had on the sponsorship side of things. I think with companies now, it's a lot easier to get people to promote your products because there's so many people out there on Instagram and Facebook or or whatever that will promote your product for free and just to get some product back. So I think it's making it a little bit more difficult for professional triathletes because they have to work a lot harder to get that sponsorship and to even get any type of cash payment or anything like that because of the technology and the availability for people to promote products for basically nothing. That's my my thoughts on technology. (laughs) I guess the biggest impact on what I do as far as my job is concerned and I, I think in business in general is the first thing I did mention previously is about using technology to do coaching. So using all that technologies out there to talk to people you don't need to meet face to face. That's the first one. The second one is the impact that technology is having on how work is done, I guess, and how business is being conducted around the world. There's so much going on. I don't think we can keep up pace with it. This is part of the problem though. So I guess what's clear is that as we move forward, it's going to get worse and worse or better and better as technology continues to invade our lives that's the problem that i i I think i'm struggling with myself you know you have automation you have uh, robotics you have this ai this artificial intelligence which i'm still struggling with myself all will have a significant impact on the way we go about doing things these cars they're developing with no drivers anymore heaven help us i mean i don't think i have the courage to get into one of those things but something is going on on the car side of the business which is using technology to do that and i think the artificial intelligence is an interesting one that it that i think it's going to replace many human jobs i mentioned previously about doctors you know operating in in in, in operating theaters robotics are now coming in and doing the operation with someone and you can be actually using a screen and operating in Mumbai in sitting in Sydney. So I don't know about the, the pace that's coming. I'm not sure whether our brains can absorb the changes that are happening around us. That's what frightens me a little bit, that technology is moving so rapidly forward. I have enough trouble with my mobile phone, let alone all the other things going on. From an executive coaching point of view, I think that will be a growth industry because I think you, you can't replace people with intuition or honesty you know in a robot you've got to have a human doing some jobs so certain jobs will grow and develop and other jobs will contract so hopefully our universities are looking at what are they teaching people in universities today to be in the future are they teaching them the right things the right career paths and i think this is what young people are struggling with i'm being trained as a lawyer do we really need all these lawyers or is there another alternative using technology maybe i'm around to see it one day yeah I don't know who he was, but had some guy that's like really big in, on AI, yeah. and he was saying that they are so far developed with robots taking over our jobs that they've had to stop because the robot will listen to every single command and it will do everything in its power to listen to your command. Yeah. So where they're at is the robot. If you say go and make me a coffee. The robot will go, will go, it will assess the situation and go, what will stop me from making that coffee for you because that's one program. Or oh, the on-off fuse. If someone hits the on-off fuse, I can't do that command. So what it does, it's that smart that it knows how to make the switch stay on because that's a threat of not doing the command. Now humans have this problem of having this robot that can't be turned off because it needs to meet your command. Yeah. That's scary. That's scary. Yeah. Mm. And, and to your point about electric, about uh, cars, yeah. already there's a precinct in Singapore yeah, that is driverless cars. Right? <laughs> I don't know where yeah. that's going to end up. I don't go into the courage to sit in one. <laughs> when you think about it, if you go back, any change was quite significant, like even the going into a plane, having a car in the first mm. place, and then the speed mm. and all of that. The difference now, and it has been, continuously getting faster. Mm. And I think that's the point, is that will our brains cope with it? 
eventually I think yes they will iron out all the problems as there will be consequences to those problems first then they get fixed but it will just continue to happen so change is always going to be happening but at this speed and it will be you know I don't know about 100 years now. Although there's going to be significant problems very fast with AI because it will be huge numbers of people will be laid off. They yeah. already are. Yeah. Banks are already yeah. laid off. Mm. Yeah. I think it was an app the other day laid mm. a large number of people yeah. off because more and more they're using computers to do it. Mm. And you've got to wonder if we've really worked out. What happens when you've got a large percentage of your population unemployed yeah. mm. and they're not earning money to buy the products that all these people are yeah. producing? Mm. That's yeah. going to be a real yes. problem. Yeah. So, it's the problem. I think the other other side on the technology is these smartphones for young people that you keep hearing about. Uh, I think the latest was that Apple's been asked to come up with some sort of changes to the technology that inhibits the young people from going onto the and they live on these phones. Yeah. Not just young people, but yeah. young. I, I know a couple of kids have they spend I don't know how many hours on the phone. It's just and then you've got to ration the phone to them and take it off them because they're just ingrained in this phone. They can't stop looking at it. Mm-hmm. I know myself, I do the same thing. I'm always opening up and checking, checking, yeah. checking, mm. which is a habit I've got into. I, it's, it's a frightening habit. Mm. So the use of technology is great, but if you overuse it and, mm. or abuse it, I'm not sure what that, where yeah. we yeah. end up. Absolutely. And you know, to the point that was made over here before as well, if we forget how to do things, mm. yeah. like reading a map, for example, we yes. always use Google Maps now. Yeah. Yeah. You're in the middle of the wilderness and your Google goes down, you've got to know how to read a map. Mm. You know? mm. so. We're still in Isle helping a, a young girl do her first half marathon not that long ago, just before Christmas, and I went for a run with her, and she was saying how her heart rate wasn't sitting where it was sitting, and I said, that's fine. She was like, yeah, but like, it's not sitting where it's meant to be sitting. I said, that's fine. Appreciate that you're a human being. <laughs> and she looked at me and I'm like, well, you're a human. Like, yeah. It's okay that your heart rate's not at 140 or wherever it was meant to be. Like, and I think that for, with technology, I just hope that we don't, the population doesn't forget that we are humans. Yeah. We're not robots. And, and like I said, like I'm all for the technology, but... Let's not forget who we are. Yeah, and soon we'll have a right anymore. That, we'll just just, just think it and it will come up. <laughs> <laughs> That'll help my spelling. <laughs> and the other thing, if you, don't have a face, if you don't have a face-to-face meeting, you, you don't see the body language. Yeah, anymore. that's right. Yeah. Facial yeah. expressions, you know, and, and that tells you a lot about people. Oh, body language is everything, isn't yeah. it? Hey, you can tell when someone's yeah. lying or... That's even in a, in a race, like when you're racing a like competitor and you see them and they, they might be up the road and you think that they're beating you, but when you see them and you can see that they're hurting, yeah. that lifts yeah. you up. Yeah. You know, that, that guy's just like, wait a minute, they're actually hurting. So, yeah. yeah, I think that's why Crystal was only 15 minutes behind, behind me at the World Chance. She could see that I was hurting. <laughs> All right, well, we've got very little time left for our allocated session today, so we might just go around the table once more, and if there's anything else that you'd like to add, you can do that at this point, given that the theme for today was looking to the future, looking to the next five years, and the things that are going to be good and bad for us individually and for, and generally. We'll start with Josh. <laughs> no, you can't put me on the spot. Like that. <laughs> just testing. Well, I think looking in the future for yourself, I think... Like I said before, work hard, but work hard for your passion. And I think for the generations before us was, uh, before Crystal and my generation was work hard to live. And and that was great. That sent a really good foundation for people like Crystal and I. It taught us how to work hard. But let's not forget that we are on this earth for a short period of time. So figure out what your passion is. And work hard at your passion and build a business or go to work that allows you to spend more time doing what you want to do, I think. That's what Crystal and I will be looking at in the next five years is building another business that allows us to do more of what we want to do. Yeah, well, so I'll touch on what what was our fourth point a little bit about non-business contributions as well, and as you look to the future. So as I've sort of experimented with this portfolio of, all right, what am I going to do next? One of the things I've got to say I've enjoyed the most is 
working in a not-for-profit sense, you know. And there are two things that I'm doing at the moment that I get a lot of satisfaction out of. One is working with an organisation with the Asylum Seekers Centre, and they're there to help asylum seekers who are people seeking to become refugees. And what that organisation does is everything it takes to help those people through that process. And what I do within it is help those asylum seekers find jobs. Well, that's an incredibly satisfying thing mm-hmm. to do. And we, we were talking about you know, the joy of working with other people. Yeah. These are extraordinary people from all over the world, yes. all with different experiences and different personalities. It's a real pleasure to do it, I've got to say. The other thing that I do is sit on a not-for-profit board. To be honest, I find that harder because I'm not sure I'm the best board <laughs> member in the world. I prefer doing things to talking about them. But... But it's still great because it allows you to learn the skills of a board and how a board operates and everything. And this is just a not-for-profit. So I think as people look at what they can do as they move forward, you know, certainly the not-for-profit space and the volunteer space is a really rewarding one. You know. Sticking to the same theme, it's back to that human-to-human interaction, helping each other. To me... I certainly look back at my life so far and think how fortunate I have been for people helping me throughout, growing up, working, where I am now. And so to be able to keep remembering that and see, appreciate how lucky one is and how you can help others, not as a favour to them, but as a satisfaction to you, really. Exactly. So it's two-way, and it's not like saying I'm being big deal and helping then that's back to your point about that refugees yeah. human to human young athletes where people understanding it you, you guys have traveled the, the the journey you're still traveling it so it's much more meaningful for you to talk to someone about that uh, for me i think i continue with my journey of doing that as well as keeping myself open for opportunities there are things that are around the corner that i don't know about and that I can contribute in, when they come, I'll know it and I'll do it. Uh, I guess the theme is around technology, and what I'd like to say is that don't let technology take over your life. Utilise the technology to the best advantage for a better life. On the theme of what I talk about, virtual coaching, I mean, that is just technology helping us help people. And that's, I guess, my passion at the moment. Probably more passionate about the pro bono mentoring and coaching that I do rather than than trying to build a business and utilising the technology to make sure I can deliver a more effective service to people. But don't let it dominate your whole life. I think that's the missing part that I I struggle with, this technology taking over everything that I want to do. Utilise it because it's there. But make sure there's a balance between the human interaction and the technology. Well, I guess probably the thing that I want to say is, and I guess it follows on what everyone else has said, just figure out what makes you happy and do it. Simple. Whether you need to adjust your lifestyle to quit your job, to be able to have more time to do what you want to do, you'll be surprised at how little amount of money you need to survive (laughs) if you cut out (laughs) a lot of things whatever you want to do and just just do that i might just do a little plug if anyone wants to get in contact with me or they want help with anything sporting whatever coaching mentoring you can follow me on instagram and at crystal hockley or on facebook the one thing that i've gathered from this podcast is what we've discussed today was face-to-face and technology so we're saying that technology helps us and it when when it's needed and we're saying that we we should or we would want we want to do more face to face so therefore is it up to us the people to like we're only going to disconnect from people if we accept the technology so we've got skype so i can skype someone that's just up the road to me because it's there we accept that we can get in the jump on a train or go in the car and drive up the road and, and have that face to face. I understand if you're in a different country, that's great. The technology is great for that, but we like we don't need to accept the technology if we can actually go and physically see the person. You, you know what I mean? Because we're all saying that we want to yeah. we want to do more face to face. Well, then let's just, let's do it. I guess I should do a little summary too. What what has come out of this for me is that. I really need to revisit how I teach people not to say um in their public speaking, Fuliana and Crystal. <laughs> I thought we could edit this all out. 
But we oh, can. Oh, well, that's embracing technology. <laughs> <laughs> we're just trying to keep it interesting for Kim, yeah. aren't we? We're going to do it for her. Thank, Thank you. you with your editing skills. Thank you all so much. Next time, I'm just going to have John, Nick and Josh. <laughs> I really appreciate the honesty and the open conversation that we have had around the table today. It has provided us with a whole lot of material that we can use in the podcast. I congratulate Fuliana for putting up with 100 episodes and making it happen. It was a big challenge when we first started. She really wasn't sure. And she's even done a video, as you know. There's a video on the website now, so she's done a video. And we will pursue that avenue a little bit further this year. But to sum up, I want to thank John and Nick and Josh and Crystal and Fuliana for being here today and for your input. But for now, I'm Kim Bailey. She's Fuliana Osborne and this is Inside Exec.